Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to clean and maintain the Dyson V11 cordless vacuum cleaner. Now hopefully most of you watching this have got one of the V11s and are really enjoying it and impressed with the performance. But what you will find is every now and then you will need to give it a good clean and keeping it all clean and well maintained can really help. First of all with the suction, so it's the actual pickup ability and also it can help with the life of the vacuum cleaner if you keep it clean. So really what I want to do is to show you really how to take some bits apart if you're a little bit nervous about doing it. Um, but what I will say is that this is not endorsed by Dyson and some parts you might not want to take apart, especially as we get into some of the screws in here. Uh, this is just something that I've found and I found from comments with people from my other videos that it really has helped to take it apart and to give it a good clean. So the first thing to do really is to disconnect the wand. There's not really a lot you can do with this. All I'd recommend is just check down the pipe here. Just make sure there's no blockages because uh, if, if there is then that can have, can have an effect on the performance of the vacuum. So really now we've done with that then I'll pull that to the side. So for the purpose of this part all you'll need is a cloth, a paintbrush and a coin. So in the UK you would probably use a 2p coin. And the first tool I wanted to clean is this one which is the high torque head as they call it. And to get into this what you need to do is put a coin in the side so you can see the slot there. Put the coin in and you turn it a little bit. It's probably not, not even a, an eighth of a turn. And what you'll find is it can be a, a little bit stiff to, to get it out. But that just pulls off the side and the first thing I have done is I've got some newspaper here so it just makes it easier to clean up afterwards and don't worry this is a utility area it's not really a, a kitchen as such because I have people in the past comment that why am I doing this in my kitchen but uh, don't worry it'll all be cleaned up afterwards so this is the brush brush head and what you'll find over time, this, I mean, this model is actually fairly new, so that's why it isn't too dirty. But what I'll tend to do is just have a look at the brushes and the bristles on here to see how they are. And what you'll find over time that these will gradually reduce in size as they wear out. And to really improve the performance, you can find that just by buying another one of these can help. And really to, to clean this, all I'll do is I'd get a paintbrush and go round. You, you don't want to get this wet. And in here there isn't a huge amount you can do but I just really get a cloth and probably a, a damp cloth. So depending on how dirty it is you can get the, the cloth right behind there. I wouldn't really recommend taking any of, of this apart. So once we've done that, um, give the outside of it a wipe. What you can find over time that, just see if I can get in there. So you, you can find that uh, rather than using a damp cloth that things like baby wipes can be quite good especially for doing the, the inside if you've got dirt on the, the inside and then to put that back all you need to do is just locate that in there just give it a twist so that it's in there just know that on this it has got a slot on the bottom so it's slightly cut off and that just matches up there. So you just pop that on the side and then just get the coin and then you twist it so that that flat part is on the bottom and then with that part we're done. So the next one to have a look at is the soft roller cleaner head. As you can see this hasn't really had a lot of use and I've not long cleaned it but just to show you on this one it's slightly different to the high torque head so you can still use the same coin as I used a minute ago 
but just pop it on the bottom here and if you twist it anti-clockwise it might help by using a slightly smaller coin because you don't want to damage the edge here but rather than pulling it out on this one have a look on the side you've got a little arrow and that pushes up and then you pull it out and with that that means you can pull the brush head out and I won't go into too much detail on this again it doesn't really need cleaning huge amount but what you can find is just again have a look at the bristles see how they are it might help to just change this part rather than having to buy a whole new head and again just get a, a damp cloth and wipe it on the inside here and on the outside to give it a good clean and then once you've finished pop the head back in there make sure it's located down to that end properly and then to put that back on that's just the reverse and that just clicks into place and then you just turn that clockwise quarter of a turn and then you're done with that head and the next tool to have a look at is this one it's the mini turbine head or turbo brush they, they call it different names and it's similar principle to the others where you just get a coin and pop it in the side and you turn it it's normally about a quarter of a turn or eighth of a turn take that part out and similar to the soft roller cleaner head I haven't really used this one that much and this pulls out it's a little bit stiffer because you've got the bristles to contend with going through the whole hair and similar to the others where just get a cloth wiped on the inside I wouldn't recommend using water or anything on here so once you've done that then just pop that back in make sure it's pushed in properly and then that clips on the end there give it an eighth of a turn till you feel it it's finished and again I'd just recommend keeping an eye on the bristles because you will find over time that these do wear out and you, know, you can get get these replaced I'll try and find a, a link and post it here so that you can get some some fairly competitive prices and really as far as the tools and I've got the other tools here I won't go into details because you've got things like the combination tool soft dusting brush the stub and dirt brush I, uh, to be fair I've not long cleaned these and I don't really think there's much point in me spending time showing you how to clean these because they are fairly self-explanatory but all I say is once you have cleaned them if they have got wet then just make sure they're completely dry before you use them again but really what I want to do is to concentrate on the vacuum itself now so now I've put the tools and accessories to one side we'll concentrate on the vacuum itself and the first thing I'd always do is to take the filter off the back and I hope you can see here it's got a picture of a tap on it so really the first thing to do is to give this a, a quick wash and it's not really said whether you do it under warm water or cold water but to be fair for this normally cold water should be okay so really once you've done this is to make sure it is completely and utterly dry before before you put it back in the vacuum so you'll need to leave this for I would normally recommend about 24 hours but what I normally say when people are buying these because we do sell a lot through our website and uh, through our showrooms that I do recommend people buy a spare one of these and I know it sounds odd when you're first buying it but what it means is that you can clean that and if you needed to go and do some vacuuming now then I could put my spare one on straight away and go off and do some vacuuming and for that reason I've found a link here which I've posted below to show you where to get one at a competitive price and, uh, so yeah I'd always recommend that but for the purpose of this just put it to one side and let it dry for about 24 hours and clearly before we do anything else we'll need to take the bin off and empty it so obviously to, to empty it it should be fairly obvious and that can make quite a mess and to 
actually, that's the easy part, to actually empty the bin and get rid of all the rubbish. But the other thing that probably isn't quite as obvious, underneath to remove the bin, is to press this little red tab and carry on pulling it. And what you'll find that that removes the bin, which is getting a bit filthy here, and this part is all ready to clean. But what I will do, because I do take the comments on board from my other videos, in my first cleaning video of the Narsen V6, I left a lot of the rubbish on here while I was cleaning the rest of the vacuum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this and put it in the bin so that we can carry on. So now that we've done that, then we can carry on with this. So the first thing I'll do is with this, the, the bin, just get a paintbrush and just wipe around, give it a brush to get rid of a, a lot of the debris. And just go around the seals, just make sure the, the seals are okay. And around the top here. So what I always do is I always get rid of the, the worst first and then you can give it a quick rinse. So a couple of options, you can either get a cloth and actually go through it round it inside. Personally, I quite like to give this a, a rinse underwater. I know it's not really recommended because there are some metal parts on here, but I must admit I do like it to be nice and clean. So just give it a, a wash in here. So now that I've cleaned it, I normally just get a, a dry cloth and just give it a, a white round just to make sure it's nice and clean and dry. And while you're doing it, just make sure all the seals, especially the, the rubber seals, are really nice and clean and free from any dirt. But if you've washed it, you'll see there might be little bits of water around, especially in some of the nooks and crannies in the corners. So I would recommend just making sure this is completely dry before you use it properly. But now we've done that, I'll just put that to one side. So for this next bit, I'll show you how to remove the battery and some of the vacuum cleaner to give it a really good clean. But what I didn't normally do, first of all, is to get a screwdriver. And for this, so for this next first bit, you'll just need a small cross head, normally a, a Phillips drive, to go in here. And you've got the two screws underneath. So this is quite easy to do. Um, this is really, if you need to replace the battery, so you've got two screws underneath there, and then you've just got one on the back in the handle. Um, so if you need to replace the battery, and you'll find over time that the, the run time gradually reduces. Um, that's really easy to do. So we just remove the battery there, so I must admit, the first time I did this, I was a bit nervous because the on and off button goes in. And, but all that does is by that switch there, just enables the on and off switch to be pushed in. So once you've done that, so at, at the moment, yeah, so if you need to replace the battery, then that's a, a really easy way of doing it. But really for, for the purpose of this, you don't need to replace it with anything. So I'll just put that back together and just put the screws back in to where they came out a minute ago. So 
So first of all, what I'll just I'll, I'll just give this a quick brush down, but what I really want to do is to get into this part, because I know that sometimes over time it can get dirty. So first of all, let's give this a, a brush down, just to get, get rid of some of the some of the dirt, because you can you can get really dirty yourself doing this job. This is probably one of those jobs to do when when there's not a lot else in the kitchen if you're doing it in the kitchen or recommend doing it in a utility so now we've got rid of some of those bits then first of all I'll just show you this because you'll notice that on here these are really tiny screws and these are a Torx drive or Torx drive and the size you need for this is the T8. So if you are doing this, hopefully you've got a, a little kit. And you might be wondering why I've been using the extension. And it's mainly for this purpose because it just makes life a lot easier to get in to the vacuum from here. So you've got there's three screws here. They're only short. Trying to drop them like I've just done. So I'll just show you that. So it is quite a short screw. So just put those to one side. And then you've got one other one that's located underneath. Once you've done that, then this front part actually, nope, sorry, you've actually got a fourth one under there. So now we've got the four out, and you can see in here there's a lot of dirt around here, and I'll be completely honest, there are three screws here that you can undo. I have tried to undo them, but it didn't really serve a purpose to get this off. And I don't want to risk damaging this at all. So what you can do, and I just really recommend giving it a, a brush in here, because there's a, a lot of dirt and dust that you can get off from inside here. Clearly if you have got a, some of the the can there, as they call it, or a compressor, then you can use this to, to get rid of this, the, the dirt and everything. It's not really something you do inside, but uh, that can be useful. And then once you've done that, and um, just slot that back on, and we can get the four screws back in. It's not the three screws as I initially thought. So I'll, we'll give this a, a proper clean in a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to get rid of the worst of the the dirt and debris before I took that end part out. So now we've done that, let's turn it round. What I am going to do is just get rid of some of this dirt because I'm accumulating quite a lot at the moment. And for this part, so what I want to do is I want to take this apart now. But what you will need is a small screwdriver. And it needs to have quite a, a thin head. And what you'll find is you've got several screws around the side here. And again, they are only small. So if we pop those to, to one side. 
just be careful you don't damage the heads on these because if you do damage them then there's not a lot you can do to get the, the screw out. It does help if you've got a magnetic screwdriver. It just helps to get all the screws out. So we've got uh, four there, and the next ones you've got are just two underneath. So it's by the by the switch. You've got two little screws there. So if you just take those out as well. And then once you've got those four screws out, then that should, it's a little bit tight, but that pulls off. And then you've got access to near the motor, the, the motor is all housed within this unit. There won't be a huge amount you can do with this. Uh, all we'd say is just, if, if it is dirty around here, just give it a, a quick brush. Uh, at the moment, this is still fairly new. So just giving it a, a quick brush with a paintbrush will be will be no problem. Just make sure you don't get any of this wet. You can't get any of this wet because it will damage the vacuum and anything like this won't be covered under the Dyson warranty. So I'll just pop that to one side. And then you'll see in here, uh, because this is still relatively new then, it's it has accumulated some dust, but what you will find if you're watching this after you've had your vacuum for a year or two, then you might find there's quite a bit of dust and dirt in here. So just give this a, a brush out. And then once you've done that, then make sure that's nice and clean. And you locate it, so you've got that, that part at the bottom here. Hopefully you can see that, just locates back on. And it is a little bit stiff to get that on, just make sure it lines up nicely around here and then once you've done that then we'll get the I'd normally put these four screws back in first of all and then once you've got those screws in then just make sure you put these two in at the front And then once you've got those two screws back in place, then you're ready really to start sort of cleaning around this main part. And this is quite important to, if you just use a, a paintbrush, just to carry on. I know we did it a little bit earlier, but I normally use a, a paintbrush and then a cloth to get this nice and clean. And what you can find is that some dirt can get clogged up in some of these parts because if you, if you bang it a little bit and that's where some of the dirt is stored up in here you can find that it um, almost comes out as you're cleaning it which can be really frustrating but uh, there, there is only so much we can do to, to these vacuums because you want to make sure that you don't damage it at all so once we've done that Get the cloth. Make sure that's nice and clean. So the next thing I'd recommend doing, before you start putting any of it back together, because now we've got it all nice and clean, is to clear your work surface, because what will happen is as we start to put it back together, we're putting it back together on a dirty surface. So I'm just going to clear this way and get it all nice and clean just before we put it all back together. So now we've got the vacuum nice and clean. We've got all the screws back in place. Just make sure that everything lines up properly and just make sure that uh, this, this part under here locates properly because what you can find is you might have a, a slight gap around the side there. 
So just make sure that it's all back in place properly. Battery's installed. And all we need to do now is to get the, the bin on and it locates underneath. And just make sure the that part is in the centre because it can be a little bit fiddly to get back on. So locate it back into place and you'll hear it click. And then that fits on the end. Like I mentioned earlier, you might get the odd bit of dirt still coming out, but that's because it's well within the the inner shroud and the you'll find that it is very difficult to get out but I uh, shouldn't worry too much about it and that's the filter that we washed again just make sure it's completely dry and uh, that just slots on the back like that just turn it clockwise until you've uh, got it located properly I hope you enjoyed this video on how to maintain and clean the Dyson V11 quarters vacuum cleaner please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, leave a comments below and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.